Mark Isis, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Want to start you off with an easy question. What's your favorite holiday? You go first, Isis. Well, growing up, my favorite holiday was always Christmas. Um, unfortunately, the matriarch of my family for most of my life was my great aunt, um, who's since passed. And my grandmother tried to keep the tradition going, but my family doesn't really do it. So um, now I'm kind of like a Grinch. <laughs> but it was always Christmas. I say that to say it was always Christmas. Um, I would say that. Of course, I love Christmas because my family, um, my mom's side of the family being Italian, we do like the Feast of the Seven Fishes and things like that, which, you know, obviously the holidays for me is like all about food. Um, but I would say I love Thanksgiving. Don't love the, the history of the holiday, but I love the food. I mean, I could eat like trays of stuffing at a time. So Stuffing? Um, Stuff, girl. Yes, are you? You haven't had mine. Oh, give me problem. the give me the mac and cheese, and we could talk. Girl, you haven't had my stuffing, so don't even talk to me about it yet. All right, I'm gonna make you a nice tray. Don't you worry. Ready. <laughs> I'm just curious if that kind of changed because of the show. Because the show, I mean, I, I think it's such a really brilliant idea to sort of have each episode revolving around a, a, a holiday. Um, I'm also curious about how that works in terms of filming, because, you know, I imagine for some of the seasons, you probably had to cheat a little bit. Uh, yes, we filmed everything during the summer. Mm. So, um, you know, a hot Los Angeles summer in yes. turtlenecks and wool coats is not necessarily the most, like, comfortable um, <laughs> uh, thing ever. Um, and because, you know, this season was quite short, it was only five episodes, like, we really did everything in uh, this past summer. So, uh, you know, being in the deep valley in wool isn't necessarily the most comfortable thing, but I mean, it was, a, we got like a nice head start into like kicking off the holiday season. Mm. I think also it really like us come together, it really felt like a family. So all of those feelings that I would get growing up, like I did start to feel them. And then we also have Gloria, who's such a great leader and she's like so warm and it really just allow us to really embrace these holidays and these feelings in this moment. It was really, really fun. I agree. So how, how did that feel? I mean, how does it feel to come together as, as, a, as a family? It feels good we need we, this is what we need right now so i really yeah. enjoyed it it was really therapeutic to go to work and to be with a family who were actually all really really sweet off camera too like it was really therapeutic for me yeah for sure i mean and also because of the time that we're living in i.e like covid and stuff like that you know it was actually like to say what isis said as well like very like cathartic and really lovely to like film all of those big family scenes, whether it was for Noche Buena or for, um, for uh, New Year's. And then when we circle back around to the second Noche Buena of the season, um, you know, a lot of us can't really go and see our families for the holidays because of the time that we're living in um, for health and safety reasons. So, you know, I, I think that it was very nice to kind of mimic that with a group of people that we all really became really close with. And um, yeah. Mm. So I want to kind of jump off of the work that you've both been doing, which I've really enjoyed. You know, Mark, obviously, when I'm compiling year-end list, Hacks is like one of the best shows of the year, if not the best. Mm -hmm. I thought it was incredible. Thank I just, you. I jumped, I jumped back to Equal. I don't think I've ever seen a docu-series that's quite like that. You know, I was wondering at first why um, many uh, performers were in it, but the reenactments, just the, the, the content, I thought was so brilliant and so brilliantly done. You both seem to really have sort of an emphasis um, on wanting to be in projects that matter, that, that are important to you. And I'm wondering sort of how does this fit in? How does this feel like for both of you, this is a project that, that matters? Well, well I, go, go ahead, ahead Isis. You no, you go okay. okay. Well, I, I think that one of the things that, that drew me to this project of With Love in the beginning was we were coming off of filming the first season of Hacks and I felt so creatively fulfilled by, you know, just, just by virtue of working with incredible artists that 
really pushed me to be better. Um, and that's kind of, I think, you know, I can speak for myself and Isis in this capacity where it's like, I think that we're two artists that really love to challenge ourselves and push ourselves in ways that we don't even know if we can do. And I think that with love, while I relate so much to my character of Jorge, I, I did feel that one of the things that drew me to the project was the multiplicity of experience within the queer community. That, you know, that it isn't just about, like that Jorge isn't the only queer character. And like that that's not the only queer relationship that we're seeing. Um, or queer body that's leading the show, you know, I think that that soul and what Isis brings to to soul and soul's experience is like so it's it's so perfect and it's so interesting and it's so different from Jorge's in a lot of ways, but there are intersections. And I think that that's kind of the crux of like the queer experience, right? Is that there are intersections, but we are not a monolith as a community. And I think that that's what With Love really highlights for me. He, he literally said exactly what, what I would say. Um, we're all so different and to see us written in a way so beautifully and so whole um, is something for me I'm not really used to seeing as a trans actress who have been doing this for what I think for about 12 years, it's, it's new. And it shouldn't be new, but it is new. And mm -hmm. it was just so refreshing to see that I also have a gay cousin who's in a healthy relationship. And I'm a trans non-binary oncologist who finds love. These are just things for a script I never see, or, or I don't think we really ever do. So, um, I just know the fact that they're a doctor, girl. Sorry yes. to interrupt you. And the no, fact no, that they're a doctor. Ahead. Like that is that is like I just thought that that was something too like regarding soul is like I think the whole show itself is is portraying like the Latinx family in a way that like we're upper middle class. Like, you know, like it, you know, there there are like certain things, certain uh, details and and kind of caveats that you don't really see regarding like the Latinx family and I think regarding like seeing as a viewer, like seeing trans bodies on TV, like I have never seen a trans non-binary person be a whole doctor. Um, you know, I feel like trans bodies and especially trans bodies of color are often, correct me if I'm wrong, I just like relegated to very specific um, economies, most yeah. of which are underground economies, which is probably the lived experience for many, many bodies, but that also, you know, television is also supposed to be, and film, you know, like some semblance of like aspirate, like aspirational, yes. you know, and like, and that oh, we want to see things on TV that like, that we aspire to be, yeah. right? And and not feel pigeonholed in um, certain like realities that we maybe find ourselves in as like queer bodies. And so I think that that aspirational aspect of with love is also something that I haven't seen before. And I actually personally know a black trans doctor who is fabulous. And for, for black and brown people to see ourselves as more, what's the possibilities? Also, Middle America and people around the world to see that we we can be whatever we we put our minds to, and we should be granted the access to do that. And it shouldn't be a shock or surprise. And I think that with love, kind of bundles that all up together, like the possibilities. And this is not a far fetched scenario. I have multiple queer people in my family, and you know we're all doing our own things. So this is necessary. And, mm -hmm. you know, and look how cool my cousin is. Like, look at us. It's like, <laughs> cool. Yeah, we're, pretty, we're pretty fire. We're pretty so, fire. Where I, wanna jump, I wanna jump off that point a little bit because, you know, this feels like it's in many ways sort of a groundbreaking series. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it before, but in many ways, you know, comfortable, safe, familiar. So it kind of has both of those things going. I'm wondering for both of you, what do you think you know, the fact that it's on Prime Video, that Gloria is involved with it, that it just feels like we're kind of opening up the world a little bit. How, how important is that for you? 
it's extremely important. I think that it's the most important thing. Um, you know, I, I think that for both of for both of us in like the kind of activism that we do and kind of where we find like where we want to position ourselves within this industry, this is kind of a perfect fit. Um, you know, I I in in speaking in terms of like the kind of queer experience and the cis gay male experience, I'll speak for myself as not being a monolith. You know, my goal, one of my biggest goals is to play as many gay characters, cis gay characters in, in as many nuanced ways as possible. Nice. So as a means of, of exploring and challenging myself as an artist, um, even though I am a cis gay man, you know, my experience is completely different than most of my friends, right? And so, and also to kind of acknowledge the fact that our sexual and orientation and gender are not the only important parts of our personality. Like they're, they're merely just kind of pillars of our lives. They're not what defines us or at least defines me. Like, I don't think that I would say that being gay is at the top of my list of what I think defines me as a human being. And I think that with love is a really interesting examination of how we just are, that, that it's not, you know, Jorge's identity is not uh, predicated on his gayness. Um, I would say that his, his <laughs> character is predicated on his neuroses. <laughs> Mark, you were on one today. Like you're, you're like, you, the way you're answering these questions, I was like, Girl, I don't know what's going on go with me today. Next time, because you're hitting all the points. I, I, Mark, Mark, everything Mark said um, rings true to me as well. And I think this is our first time just doing an interview by ourselves, so I didn't yeah. realize that it would be so. His verbiage is so perfect and can be used for my scenario as well. It's so important for me. Before this role, there were certain roles that I that I would turn down. I'm tired, I don't, I want more, I want more. But now I'm doing this, I do feel confident playing another type of trans person. Now that we finally have this kind of, in a way, wholesome career and family oriented trans character. Now I do feel comfortable continuing to play many different others. Um, I just want the world to know that there is a variety. Like we have different aspirations in life. We have different, like we're, we're just so different. And now that soul is here in the, what do they say, the glory of ours? Now that soul is here, I am confident with, with other kind of characters to come out because this one is so necessary for so many different types of people, but we just never really see it. Um, yeah, but other than that, copy and paste. <laughs> Mark's statement for this one. <laughs> Go, Mark. So, Go. Isis, I'll, I'll start off with you because um, for me, it's interesting because a lot of times I'm getting to watch shows or to do these interviews, you know, even weeks and even months before the shows come out or that people have had a chance to see it. It's a bit different now because this, the series has dropped, it's been out for a couple of days. What kind of reactions? have you been getting? Have people really been sort of like, is there a favorite episode, a favorite moment, a favorite scene? And for, you know, both of you, what, what are your favorites? I, it has been, I have to say, a overwhelmingly positive response. Um, I know when you put out a project, right, you know, it could, it can go either way. Um, but the amount of people that have said positive things to me is kind of overwhelming. You have to understand I come from a place where I would do something before it's time and it would be mostly hate, you know, like that's where I come from, from top model. So it's kind of programmed in my brain to think mm -hmm. like, okay, do your best, skim through, you know, you're not gonna focus on that. But with this, I'm like, wow, like everyone is really sweet. One of my girlfriends, I got the pleasure on Sunday to watch it with two of my trans girlfriends. And they both cried on episode two when Soul and Miles had their first kiss. And I have to say a lot of the feedback, like that is people's favorite moment because we never kind of, as trans people and non-binary, we never really get this kind of grand moment like that. And to close the episode with 
fireworks and vulnerability like that mm -hmm. it's just it, that was a really touching moment um for me also i think the ofrenda moment when i was um sat there and kind of prayed and talked to my parents and grandparents who have since passed away watching that moment for me is it's really intense but i i love it it felt so like real and and i really i really love that moment as well mm -hmm. yeah i um i love that moment between soul and miles at the end of episode two i you know my um I would say my favorite episode to shoot for me was probably episode three for Valentine's Day. I thought that as a, um, in terms of like, I mean, Gloria gave me so much freedom to improvise throughout the entire shoot, um, to, to kind of collaborate with me on things that I thought might be funny on like, whether it was a joke or omitting something from something that he said or whatever, and just really gave me the reins in a lot of ways to like create Jorge. And I felt like episode three for Valentine's Day when we go to wine country <laughs> was my favorite thing to shoot. I felt like I had, I just had a blast shooting, shooting those scenes with, um, with, with Vinny. And I also loved, uh, you know, when we barge into the hotel room and find Nick and Lily on the bed kissing. That was just such a fun moment to, to kind of play with and to shoot um, because we started, my very first day of work on the series was uh, a, the scene of episode one where the four of us are walking down the street together on our way to Noche Buena. So I felt like uh, to see that go from that like very wholesome kind of moment to this <laughs> kind of screaming match in a hotel room, I thought was just really funny and um, and I also just as an actor just enjoy that kind of like irreverent kind of meanness. I just thought that it was really funny to shoot. I, I want to throw in really quickly. One of my favorite parts was when you saw the housekeeper and he was like, I think this is <laughs> She was like, oh, like that whole moment yeah. before leading up. I played that, replayed that so many times. It had, it, yeah, it was, it was such a novella moment, I mm -hmm. felt like. And like that whole bit of like me talking to the housekeeper and then us going in, it just felt like such a novella kind of like dynasty moment like what's gonna happen you know are they gonna like, it was just really funny it was just <laughs> funny to shoot and i thought that that was funny since isis gave like a nice sentimental part <laughs> i wanted to give a more funny one <laughs> always very curious about this jumping off from the show because i think it's such an incredible show what have you watched what, what has been something that both of you have watched that has really meant something to you recently meant oh. something to me or um, enjoyed well, I mean, I am like addicted to succession. Yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of like, I don't necessarily know if there is anything that I've watched recently in the kind of like LGBTQ plus sphere that is like really hit home for me or, or whatever. But in terms of like acting and watching like amazing artists make amazing content and an amazing show, succession is it's just like an all-star cast of people that are so talented. Like, I like we'll finish an episode and just literally be like, what did I just see? And like, how how do you manage to like make me hate you but are making me laugh? I mean, they just toe the line so well between drama and comedy. And that is something that people don't really understand that like aren't actors or artists that like that is so, so difficult to do what every single one of them do in that cast is to make things funny that are not funny. Um, but yet you still understand the gravity of it. I can go on for hours. You take it, Isis. I can like talk about succession for hours. Um, for me, that was me last night watching the latest episode of Insecure mm. because Insecure for me, and this, it's only one episode left of the series. I'm so sad, but watching it last night, I was like, no and i'm like they're so good i feel like we're like we're on a drone like watching this real situation happening you know it's like it's just yeah. so the nuances are just so epic so i love insecure and also another show i'm in love with right now is wheels of time the will of time yeah on amazon i haven't seen that oh my goodness. i haven't seen that i have to watch that 
that show, if you like, like it's kind of a little bit like Lord of the Rings meets like work. I'm in. Like the Airbender, kind of. The Last I'm Airbender. In. Yeah. And I will say too, not to, not to, it's not because I'm in it, but Hacks, like really, yeah. as, oh. as a, as like, a, as an audience member, because I'm not in Hacks that much. No, so Hacks I is can amazing. Watch it, so I can watch it more objectively because Damien is so much like, you know, he's around, but like I, you know, I think that in terms of like, I think that there are parallels between Hacks and like with Love. I mean, we're talking about, in our show about, um, you know, multi-generational love. And I think that Hacks is tackling ageism in a way yeah. that is really, really powerful. And also, you know, similarly to the way that I feel about Succession, Paul and Lucia and Jen who created Hacks and are, you know, at the forefront of making Hacks. Um, and of course the legendary Gene Smart are like somehow making something that is so, uh, serious like ageism in hollywood um uh, funny and mm -hmm. like that's that is incredible hacks is amazing i i've i gotta go i've gotta let you go i just wanted to say thank you you've both been so wonderful in discussing the show i hope to see more and i hope to see more of both of you thank you again thank, thank you, you so much, much charles have a great day bye charles bye, bye. bye.